Welcome back. Lots of baseball players all over the country are crushing their off-season workouts right now, so they have a chance of making their high school teams in the spring. I am Grayson Knight, and this is Baseball Podcast Our Fun. Although I am st- I, I am still a year and a way, year and a half away from uh, ninth grade, I'm already thinking about the things I need to do to set myself up for success. I want to be able to do to be the best version of myself as a player and teammate. And today, I'm going to get another look at the cheat sheet uh, to help make that happen. Joining me today is head coach of the Duluth Wildcats varsity baseball team. And with any luck, he'll be my head coach in a few short years. Coach Ryan Turner, Turner thanks for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm excited to. Uh, so this is your this first goes. podcast? Yeah, I think so. I've nice. listened to some. I've never talked in one before. <laughs> Nice. Um. So, are you nervous because this is your first podcast? Uh, I'm okay. I think so. I, I excited to see how it goes, but uh, I'm not too nervous. Mm-hmm. So, thanks for coming on. And uh, first question: Um, how long have you been the coach at uh, Duluth? Great question. I'm really bad with numbers. So, I, I started coaching as a pitching coach. I guess it was 13 years ago there, and then. I I counted this up the other day. Um, It's I think it's been four years of head coach, maybe five, somewhere in that range. I, uh, you know, the years go by quick. So you kind of, you know, I'm not one to look back and numbers and all that kind of stuff. But it's been four or five years. Mm -hmm. Do you teach also? I teach. Yes, I teach physics. Um, So I spend I spend as much energy on on that as I do baseball. I thought you said you were bad at numbers. Well, I'm (laughs) bad at uh, (laughs) not not those numbers. I'm I'm good at the Mm -hmm. physics numbers on there. The records and all that stuff, I'm not a big, you know, I don't keep up Mm -hmm. with that as much as I probably should. (laughs) Okay, so uh, uh, more about my future team in a bit, but let's go way back. Where did you grow up and how did you get started with baseball? All right, so I grew up in Dahlonega, Georgia, which is, you know, a little bit north of Atlanta in the in the rural mountains type area. Uh, I just my brother was three years older than me. He played sports. um, So I just always wanted to play with my dad and my brother in the yard. Um, I was left-handed, which really, uh, you know, got my dad excited when I was younger, I think. So we were always playing catch and played t-ball, you know, as soon as, I guess, five years old, as soon as you could play. Um, Played all growing up. I'm trying to think. I As soon as, I was always pretty good. I think just all the time I put in the yard and stuff like that. Um, But then when I was able to start pitching, you know, when you get out of pitching machine you're in little league and start pitching is when I really started kind of taking off being left-handed and having a decent arm strength because of all the time we put into it um and uh just played park and rec ball until I don't know in in high school um I was playing on a little bit of like a local travel team and got noticed by some um you know kind of outside the area a little bit bigger city area um teams and got invited to come play with them for the summer and so kind of just things started rolling from there I ended up playing on a little bit bigger team and then I got noticed by another team and uh, by my last two years of high school I went off and played uh, up in Ohio for the summer um, with the travel team the Ohio Warhawks and it was a really great experience just kind of opened your eyes to baseball outside of you know the school level that there's a lot more going on out there and uh, it was the first time that I wasn't like dominating on the mound because I've been used to playing against local guys and they weren't you know once you kind of expand your your you know area a little bit you realize that you're not necessarily the best at everything anymore there's lots of good players out there so it was a lot more of a struggle you had to kind of grow and and adjust to keep up with everything and that helped and then playing on uh, that travel team was actually out of Ohio we came down to uh I believe it was Memphis for a tournament and uh, the Georgia Tech uh, recruiting coordinator was there and saw me pitch and somehow got my dad's phone number, I think, from one of our coaches. And during the game while I was pitching, he called my dad. My dad wasn't there because it was out of town. And he's like, I'm watching your son pitch and you don't know me. And but he's doing great. And that kind of that point, he won my family over. So I ended up going to uh, to Georgia. That's Tech. awesome. Yeah. So that was my. Uh, my, it's hard to get noticed, and that was kind of my lucky time to get noticed. He happened to be at one of the games. I had a really good uh, good outing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually Coach Strickland, uh, and he's the head coach at UGA now, funny enough, but he was the Georgia Tech uh, recruiting coordinator back then. Um, so played played uh, three years of college. Well, actually, I, I hoped to get drafted out of high school. I had lots of calls and all that, but when it just the draft happened, nothing, nothing happened. Uh, a lot of it's because if 
if you're a college type guy and you're not a real high round pick, they assume you're going to go to college anyway. So they just don't waste the pick on you. And that was probably the best bet for the team because I was pretty set on going to school at that point. Um, played three years, uh, hoped to get drafted after my junior year. Didn't work out. So I came back for my senior year. Um, we had a lot of success in college. We were able to go to the College World Series one time. We won the ACC championship a year. Um, made a super regional for three straight years. Um, and then after my senior year, I was a late round pickup by the uh, Texas Rangers. So I got drafted in, I think it was the 45th round. I don't think they have that many rounds anymore um, with the new draft, but. Um, I think it's 40. Is it 40? I think it's 40. Yeah, it's 40 now. Okay. Yeah, I know that it was, it was late. Um, and it was a great opportunity. It really kind of just, again, opened my eyes to more, you know, how the professional game works, how it's more about the business side and uh, not as much relationship as I was used to. It's kind of like how you can perform, you know, and how you can, if you're moving up or not. But I had some good, good experiences. I actually got the pitch in spring training um, with the big league team uh, one year there, um, which oh, was wait, great. Who did you get drafted by? Uh, the Rangers. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, I played with a lot of guys that were playing on TV for many years after my career was done. So I had some, some really good teammates um, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, had a great experience. And then by the end of a couple of years of the minor league stuff, I just realized that I, I wasn't moving up like I, uh, thought I, or hoped I would, and just wasn't really enjoying life as much as I thought it would be in that, in that lifestyle of being away from home and, you know, just the day to day. It's fun playing baseball, but it got to be a little bit where I was just, all right, I think I'm at an age now where I need to just start thinking about the bigger picture future. And, uh, I was dating, uh, my wife which we were just uh, dating at a time and we met in college and the year after the the less than a year after I kind of retired from baseball uh we went ahead and got engaged and got married so just kind of moved on from life uh from there I guess um so uh have you have you seen like um, a major difference between uh the youth baseball game you played uh back when you were little and now that you're coaching uh yes definitely I, now I have two young kids myself and we're not quite to that level where we're worried about you know the travel teams and all that but you can kind of start you know getting into it a little bit and there was travel teams and there was you know the you know you could pay money and go play here and all that but I feel like there's just so many more options now um I, I grew up in a little bit more of a rural area so it was like everybody in that area played at the same park and rec and so whoever played baseball was all on the same team you know in the same county and we didn't really mix with other counties we played them during the season but nobody on summer or fall teams went from other counties but then I guess as I started going up and getting attention and moving around then I got into more of the scene of what is more common now where you're playing on a team that travels from tournament to tournament and um, but yeah, it definitely, um, from what I've seen, again, I, uh, I'll, I'll learn a lot more about it when my kids get a little bit older, but it seems to be a lot more pressure to, uh, to specialize and to play year round, um, which I, I wouldn't have enjoyed because I was a basketball player as well, but it feels like if you're not, if you're not, you know, if you, if you want to play at a high level at the travel team level, they're expecting you to play a year round commitment and, it kind of, I don't know, to me, to me, it kind of limits, you know, your, your growth as a person, as well as, as, you know, an athlete. But again, I'll learn a lot more about it in the, in the coming years, because I got a five-year-old son who loves baseball. But uh, right now, we're still just kind of getting started with the, the whole, you know, the mm -hmm. youth baseball scene again. Mm -hmm. So adding on to what, what you just said, um, so I'm 13 now, but uh, should kids be playing multiple sports so they can excel at like one sport? I don't I don't have a good answer as far as what would make you the best baseball player but in my opinion you would enjoy your life better you would you would look back like um, playing multiple sports to me was what I had the most fun with growing up um, I enjoyed playing basketball more than I enjoyed playing baseball um, my best memories of high school sports was actually basketball and I wasn't as good at it as I was baseball but so that's why I would recommend playing multiple sports is that you know, if your ultimate goal is to be the absolute best baseball player and, and that's all that matters, then maybe you should stick to year-round baseball because you're going to get more, um, you know, more reps, more refined and, you know, all that. But in my honest opinion, I would recommend any athlete playing multiple sports, if nothing else, just for, um, you know, just for the the experience and the, and the fun. You know, you only get one chance to play 
youth sports. And if you narrow down to one sport too early, you're, you're missing out on a lot of what could be fun experiences. So I know my kids are still young, like I said, but we're encouraging them to play anything they show interest in. We'll, we'll sign them up for and let them try it. And, uh, you know, I don't want them to look back and wish they would have tried something that they didn't, you know. Mm. So um, do you think uh, when we when players get to high school, they should be playing uh, travel ball, too, as well as high school ball? Yeah, so uh, you, I can definitely see a difference in my players that play um, travel ball. Um, when the season comes around, they you can just tell they 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 know the game better. They uh, you can just tell that experience and that it's almost like when you play outside of your local area, you see the bigger picture. You uh, you see that there's better players out there. You learn from those better players, and it just kind of elevates your game a little bit. Um, I also think there's a fine line because uh, I have had some players who play the summer team they play the fall team and, and and then they come in the season and it's just a lot of baseball and their bodies start getting worn out a little bit so I think you have to be really careful um something I, I kind of stress to my players uh, especially pitchers is you have you have to be your own advocate um your summer team coach isn't necessarily always looking out for your best interest you know he wants his team to do well he wants to show that he has good players in his team but you know, if your arm's not ready to pitch, he may not be looking out for you as much as a high school coach would that has, you know, more invested in you and, you know, who's spent more time with you. So it, it's a fine line. I can definitely, I would definitely recommend playing more than just the school season um, because you just, you get more experience, you get better, you come into the season with more confidence. But I think there's also a, a lot of guys who, who borderline overdo it and their bodies just aren't at their 100%, you know, so it's just trying to find that good balance of of playing, but but not uh, but not overdoing it, I guess. So, uh, can you walk me through how becoming a freshman and going to the tryout works? Um, so do you like show up and like you get introduced to the team? Like, how how does it work? Yeah. So uh, what I've tried. So we're allowed in the fall. So the first semester of school, you're not allowed to do any team activities for baseball. Um, I encourage all of our guys to play baseball. Um, we've done some we've done some. Uh, I'm not allowed to coach them, but I've kind of helped, you know, encourage them to do some different travel teams or what it fits their ability. Um, this year, we actually encouraged a lot of our guys just to play park and rec ball. So we had a team of like eight or nine guys and one of the parents was coaching. Um, so we try to I try to get guys started in the fall just doing stuff um, when there's a coach uh, one of the high school coaches out there we're only allowed to have four players per uh, sorry four players per coach so we do some workouts but we only you know we try to we limit it to okay these four guys are my top pitchers I'm going to work with them for an hour you know here or these guys are some hitters that need some work so we're allowed to do little stuff um, but that's kind of where it all starts is kind of getting the ball rolling in the fall um, so we're, we're now focusing at this point, we're focusing on grades. I'm trying to make sure all the guys who might help me this year are eligible to play. So we're really focusing on grades for the month of, you know, October, November, December. Um, and then once we start back, so this year is a little bit different. Um, they had an issue with the state championship dates and they moved the entire season up, a, up a week. Um, but in general, we come back and we have a week or, or in this case, only a couple of days of just strict conditioning. You're not allowed to do baseball activities. So we'll have all the guys out there. We'll do some running, probably run with your cleats on, you know, just kind of slowly get you back in shape. Um, and then this year will be that second week when school starts back up. Um, we just jump right in the tryouts. So another reason it's really important to kind of get involved in the fall, because if you don't play baseball for, you know, half a year and then you come out and you have a three day tryout basically to show what you can do, um, you might not be at your best. So it's uh, important to do something in the fall to keep in shape. But in general, um, at a school like Duluth, we have some really good upperclassmen players and we have some really good freshmen, but we don't have necessarily the numbers that a lot of the schools we compete against do just due to our population of, of our school. Um, so we, if you're a freshman and you show any, you know, potential at all, we, we usually tend to hang on to guys, especially as they're young. Um, there are other schools that we play against that might be cutting 20 or 30 freshmen every year because they just have that many guys come out to play. We just don't have the numbers at Duluth for that. So um we, we do end up cutting a few guys each year just because you can only keep so many guys for bus rides and dugout space and uniforms. So um, we, we usually give about three days of just running practice, um, do a typical practice and, and check all the guys out. And, and then throughout the each day after practice and at night, we'll coaches will get together and text and 
I, I, for the young guys, I rely a lot on the JV guy. I'll say, hey, I know these guys are good, but here's the, you know, three or four guys I'm not sure about. And then I'll ask my JV head coach what he thinks because he's the one who'll be coaching them uh, for the season. And he kind of gives me his final insight on who he thinks uh, would help. And and just being honest, a little insight, if you uh, if you are borderline, which I don't know, you know, I don't know anything about your game, but if you're ever a player that you think might be borderline to team, uh, make sure you have that really good attitude and that real, you know, that hard work, um, because it has come down at times where we've had to choose between two or three guys and the coach, you know, we tend to lean towards the player that we know will be a good teammate on the bench and won't cause issues or won't be lazy. So um, obviously, if you're a good player, we're going to keep you around. But if you ever think that you're a borderline situation, showing those kind of intangibles definitely helps you out um, when the coaches are making their final decision, for sure. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have trial. It's a three-day trial, and then we'll just get started uh, straight into the practice. And I kind of have a general, you know, practice scheme where we'll start out the first few weeks focusing more on the fundamentals and kind of just getting all the stuff down. And then as we gear up closer to the game starting, We'll do more, you know, live pitching and working on hitting curveballs and kind of the the more, you know, next level stuff um, to to make sure we're ready for the game. And we'll shift over more towards, you know, scrimmage based stuff. So guys are hitting live off pitchers and playing balls live off the bat. But the first week or two, it's more just, you know, getting comfortable fielding the ground ball, you know, getting lots of swings in, uh, easing in the bullpens kind of going up, you know, 15, 20 pitches at each bullpen, uh, kind of easing guys up to their pitch counts. And so it's kind of like a, a slow process that ends up taking about, I guess, four weeks or so before we're ready for the first game to come around. Wow. Um, so attitude and effort, uh, that's another thing my uh, my dad uh, is always talking about. Um, how much of your decision making is based on talent and how much is on attitude and effort? Yeah, I mean, it, it's like I said, it's definitely a factor. Um, at a school like Duluth, which is where I've been my whole career, so it's all I can, you know, really speak about. But um, if you're a good player, um, regardless of your attitude, we're going to do everything we can to help mold you and shape you and, and build your character because we need good players. You know, we, we have great players, but we need we need numbers. We can't just we can't afford to cut guys who are good baseball players if if they have a chance. So we'll do everything we can to help guys with their grades, to, to kind of mentor them a little bit, to make sure they're doing the right things. Um, but like I said, if you uh, if you're right on that borderline, um, it's just great. We've had guys and we to be honest, we have guys right now that uh, you really wouldn't want to sit in the dugout with because they kind of just tend to start getting negative if they're not playing. And, and it just doesn't help the team at all. Um, so if, if, if coaches can recognize those characters in you that are characteristics in you that, you know, this guy's picking up his teammates or he's if nothing else he's just hustling he's doing everything we say without complaining he's not walking around the field he's not you know uh talking while the coaches are talking stuff like that and they definitely notice that um there's a lot of tangible things we can rate players on like how fast they run and how arm strength and the ball coming off the bat but those things like attitude and characteristics a lot of it's just how the coach perceives you and uh you know any little thing you do that coach could take it and you know, maybe you just, you know, are having a bad day and you kind of mope around one day. Well, that's maybe one of the only times he's seen you and he takes that and, you know, kind of thinks that's how you are the majority of the time, whether that's fair or not. So, yeah, it's always, always important to, to have a good attitude. And like you said, to, to, to work hard and to show those good, good characteristics. Cause it's something I kind of learned. And when I was playing on some of those travel teams is like, you really never know who's watching you at any moment, especially on the baseball field. I mean, all eyes are on anybody's at the field is all eyes are out there. So there's no telling if, you know, if it's a college coach coming there to watch you, if it's, you know, for your sake, a high school coach watching you, or if it's, you know, somebody who has influence of some sort and any little thing you do could be taken and, and turned, you know, and amplified to make it seem like it's a bigger deal. So it's always, always good to, to show those good qualities for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so one more uh, school question, coach. Um, when should players start worrying about like colleges uh, coming to check them out or do the coaches have those conversations and speak to the schools? Yeah, so, um, well, when to start worrying is is immediately, I would say, because uh, you're, you're not worried about the college coach side of it, but you're worried about what you can control. So obviously the baseball side of it, but what I'm working with some guys now on is I have some guys who are really, really good players that are young players. And I'm trying to show them that, you know, making a B in a class or making an A in a class is a big deal because the time you're a junior or senior and colleges are looking at you, um, they care about your GPA because they don't want to 
uh, bring players in that they're going to have to worry about if they're going to fail classes or be able to stay eligible. So um, just making that one point higher, you know, or that one grade level higher as a freshman or as a sophomore, you know, can greatly influence your GPA and make you look like a better prospect when you're uh, when you are a junior or senior and you're getting noticed by colleges. So I definitely have that conversation with some of the standout freshmen that I think might have a chance of getting there one day that, hey, you want to make sure you're doing your work now to to make that GPA look good. Um, uh, a lot of the the college attention in my experience has come from uh, camps and summer leagues and stuff like that. If, if a guy gets noticed, the college coaches will come and watch him. You know, we've had a couple guys that the college coaches have come and watched them, but at least in our experience at Duluth, a lot of the initial attention has come from uh, playing in, in, in a camp or a summer team and they kind of get noticed and then the, co the college coach will follow up with me um, and ask about the player. Um, I have had some guys who I thought were great players and weren't getting the attention that I thought they should. And so what we've done with some guys is I'll, I had like a little template and they sent me some video. I, I wrote up like a little blurb about them and, and put it all in like a PDF. And I'd ask them, you know, what schools are you interested in? Or if you're going to a, a showcase camp, you know, what coach, what schools are going to be there that you're interested in? And, I, and I'll send that out to the schools. And um, te I've texted some guys around and it's, it's a tough it's a tough thing because, uh, you know, at Duluth, we do have some guys signed, but we don't have as many, you know, as many as I would like or a ton of guys. So I got to be really careful who I put my my um, my word behind, I guess. You know, what I'm saying? I don't want to just recommend every player to every coach because they'll stop kind of trusting your evaluation of them if they're not all, you know, good enough for that that level. So I try to um, try to help fit guys and, and contact schools that fit their their level and where I think they would probably fit in at the college level. Um, and so when occasionally when I do have that really good player come around, you know, then if I reach out to a coach, you know, he knows that it's serious and not just another guy I'm throwing at him that's probably not ready for that level. So um, we've had some good players. We had a guy, you know, that's our probably highest one is uh, Zach Irwin. And this has been a quite a few years now, but he uh, went to Clemson and he's now still play pitching the minor leagues. You know, uh, it's been quite a few years and he's still hanging around the minor leagues looking for an opportunity. We've had lots of guys go to smaller schools. Um, that tends to be what we have the most of is guys just getting up opportunities to extend their career. Um, and a lot of that comes from, yeah, just them reaching out to schools. I'm reaching out to schools. Uh, we're sharing video with coaches. Um, occasionally you'll get a college coach, you know, email you and say, hey, you know, what prospects do you have this year? And uh, to be honest, everything has gotten a little bit different since the COVID year, though. I noticed um, it's been a little bit harder to get uh, college coaches to respond. Um, I, I think it kind of got all got kind of messed up with they allowed all seniors to get that uh, fifth year of eligibility. And it kind of messed with the college coaches plans because you only have so many scholarships. Well, now you have new freshmen coming in, but you still have seniors who are on scholarship. So um, the year after COVID, when they changed the rules um, for that one year, it's it kind of threw a, a, a weird wrench in recruiting. And I feel like it's still just now we're starting to recover and get back to more of how it was prior to that a little bit. Um, we've had a couple guys recently that went to some schools, um, but uh, unfortunately not as many as I, I would like. I think we have some good players. Um, I think what happens to us a lot is we'll have a guy who's a good player and he has a chance to play at a small school. Um, but his academics are better than that. And he decides to go to a D1 school to be a student uh, rather than go to a small school and try out baseball. And so that's happened multiple times in the last few years. Uh, you have to make a decision whether your baseball uh, will take you as far as your, you know, your academic knowledge and your, you know, your, you can maybe get a better school that way. If you're, uh, we currently have a guy on our team who's the Val Victorian. So I'm sure he's going to be offered uh, or he's is currently the, the sitting Val Victorian. He's not graduated yet, but um, he's probably going to be offered uh, a lot more opportunities based on academics than he would baseball. So he's a great player, but so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that comes up as well. Um, so Coach, uh, Coach Turner, at the end of my interviews, I do these not so rapid fire questions. Um, you can answer with as much or as little info as you want. You ready? Okay, sounds good. Uh, favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh, uh, cookie dough. Nice. Um, favorite Duluth area place, pizza place. Pizza place. Oh, um, well, it's not really Duluth area, but it's uh, there's a mellow mushroom our family loves in Johns Creek. I have a uh, 
I have an unwritten policy. I have an unwritten policy with my family. My wife gives me a hard time for this, but we, I try to make sure when we go out to dinner and we do stuff like that, that we, I live in Peachtree Corners, um, which is actually the Norcross district. And uh, we kind of stay in this area because I see high school students out all the time. I don't always want to see my students every time I go out to dinner. So I, uh, I try to keep to my side over here. So I don't go to Duluth very much for dinner, but that, that mellow mushrooms close to Duluth. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, who's your favorite player growing up? Uh, good question. Uh, well, just when I was really young, I loved David Justice. I think I had a lot of his baseball cards. So that was kind of my, uh, my guy I collected all the cards of. Um, once I started, you know, getting into pitching and stuff, I got, uh, a lot of people said just because he was a brave, but a lot of people compared me to, to Tom Glavin when I was like in little league. So I started to like him because of that. So I would say probably him as a pitcher and then Dave Justice, just as a, you know, as a, as a brave as well, as, as you can tell, as a big Braves fan growing up. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you probably just answered this, but uh, what's your favorite MLB team? Yeah, def- definitely the Braves. Uh, uh, besides we, them, besides them. Besides what? them, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I try to pull for the Rangers because they're the ones who drafted me and gave me an opportunity. Unfortunately, they're not on TV a whole lot. You know, uh, at least they don't play the Braves. Uh, so I don't get to see them as much as I would. Um, other than that, it's hard. I mean, I, I try to watch and enjoy the game, um, pull for certain players that maybe I'd known or cross paths with. Um, but. I don't have any other team that I can sit here and pull for every game as a, you know, as a fan. Um, what is something a player does that drives you bonkers? Uh, I think mope, moping, um, whether it be for not pl- getting enough playing time or just having a bad plate appearance or making an error, just putting the head down and showing that defeated demeanor or that negative, you know, attitude. It really does drive me crazy. Uh, that plus, and this goes as being a teacher as well, I hate wasting time. Um, I feel like time is very valuable. Um, I have lots of, you know, lots of things you'd like to do, hobbies, work, all this stuff. So I tell my guys, we're going to get in here, we're going to work hard and we're going to, you know, not going to waste time. We're going to be productive every minute we're out here. And then we're going to get out at a decent hour so you can go home and finish your homework and all that stuff and spend time with your family. So anytime I see somebody wasting time, you know, on the baseball field or in the classroom, that drives me crazy as well. Um, everyone gets this one. What is your favorite baseball movie of all time? Oh, uh, I'd have to go old school, probably. Probably The Sandlot. We used to, on all of our bus rides for college, we'd watch all the, the baseball movies. So either The Sandlot or maybe Major League, that was a good one as well. Um, last one. What is your favorite baseball memory as a player or coach or fan? Oh, um, trying to think. I got a couple that come to mind. Um, College wise would be just playing in the World Series. Um, you, no, nothing could compare to that leading up to that point. Um, you stay at your hotel, you ride a charter bus into the stadium and there's people lying in the streets like cheering on the buses as they come in. We had like they had like a, a parade thing for us. I mean, it's just a really cool. You just felt so important as a player. You're just a college player, but you just felt so like, you know, special just because of the whole deal they did for us, which that was an awesome experience. Um, and then my other one was just probably just getting that outing in, in spring training with the Rangers. I, I faced a couple guys who were on a big league roster. Um, I was pitching for, I pitched for the Rangers. I threw the ninth inning in a, in a spring training game and Ron Washington, which is with the Braves. Now he was the manager for the Rangers at that point. So after the game was over, I went and shook his hand. I got to do the line, you know, the, the, the high five line after the game, because uh, we, I pitched the ninth inning and we won. And so that's kind of something that always sticks with me. It wasn't necessarily my best outing and it wasn't like, you know, I didn't, it just, it was kind of almost like a blur to be honest, because getting that opportunity time just, you know, flies and it's just kind of like trying to get a hold of everything. But, uh, but that's something that always sticks with me is that, you know, pitching against these big leaguers and getting to get the last out of a game and, and give them a high five and walking down the line with the, you know, the big league manager and uh, some of the big leaguers and a lot of minor leaguers who stuck around for the end of the game as well, I guess. Um, Coach Ryan Turner, uh, we did it. Um, do you have anything else you want to add or any questions for me? Uh, no, I'm just really, I think it's really cool to see somebody, uh, you know, I, I haven't, I need to listen to some more of your podcast here, I guess, but somebody uh, your age kind of taking this on and, and showing us much, much, much interest in the game is, is really cool. I'll definitely have to listen to some more of your, your stuff here and see what you got. Did you have fun? I did. I did. Uh, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your time and insights today, Coach. Um, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to coming out to a couple of the Duluth Wildcats games in the spring. 
Um, remember, listeners, you can help my show by subscribing to Baseball Podcasts Are Fun on YouTube and Spotify and going to BaseballPodcastsAreFun.com or at Baseball Podcasts Are Fun on Instagram. Please check by next week for an all-new guest. Um, until then, that was Coach Ryan Turner. I am Grace tonight, and this was Baseball Podcasts Are Fun. Don't forget to swing for the fences. See ya!